Well, hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Reine, this is Rainier Books. Today it is time for another single review of a book that I recently finished. And it's not from the Booker Longlist and not from the National Book Award Longlist. It's a book from a backlist, if you want so. And there are children after them. Leurs, enf Leurs enfants après eux by the French writer Nicolas Mathieu won the Prix Goncourt, France's equivalent of the Booker Prize in 2018. The English translation by William Rodermore was published in 2020 by Hodder and Stoughton. Mathieu was born in 1978 in Epinal, a small town in northeastern France, which could be the role model for the fictitious town of Elange, where his novel is playing. This is a coming-of-age story of a bunch of juveniles growing up in Elange, but it's also a portrait of French small-town life in the 1990s. In the 1990s, many small towns in France faced significant changes, socio-economic changes and challenges that led to notable transformations of the life in these towns. Globalization led to an economic decline that caused a lot of traditional industries to decline. That development is very similar to what happened in the United States' Rust Belt, in Great Britain, in other countries. People lost their jobs and unemployment grew steadily. In 1997, unemployment in France was 12.6%. The far right, led by Jean-Marie Le Pen, gathered more and more votes than before due to widespread economic discontent and fears for the future. This is the backdrop. This is the sort of background where the scenario for Mathieu's novel, whose protagonist is a young boy named Anthony, or Anthony. We follow him on his way into adulthood, meet also Assine, who is of Moroccan descent, and Stéphanie, a girl Anthony fells for and tries to make his girlfriend over the four years the novel is covering from the early 1990s until the World Cup in France and Soccer World Cup in France in 1998. Asid becomes a successful drug dealer, much to the concern of his hard-working father. One day, he steals a motorcycle that Anthony has borrowed from his own father, from his father. On a festival, there will be a fateful encounter between Asin and Anthony's father. Stephanie, who is the Stephanie, who is the daughter of the mayor of Elan, she moves to Paris eventually, where a completely different and new world opens up for her. Mathieu inflicts the rural and urban divide into the novel, with the elites and the capital looking down on the provincial population. We know that from America, the red states, the blue states, the coast, and the inner country. This book really captivated me. The characters are not at all exceptional or especially interesting, I think, but they seem to be normal people who struggle to live this life. At one point, Mathieu writes, at one point, Mathieu writes, you had to wonder what kind of life those people could be leading in their shabby housing, eating fatty food, hooked on video games and soap operas, spending their time making children and trouble, lost, enraged, and marginalized. I was reminded of a series of videos that I recently watched by the American YouTuber Peter Santanello, who visits the deprived and deindustrialized regions in Pennsylvania or Ohio and Virginia or in Appalachia, where people are captured in the, again, quote, <clears throat> crushing repetition from Monday to Friday while waiting for holidays in an endless cycle that took you from youth to the cemetery in the snap of your fingers. Nicolas Mathieu's novel was published in 2018. In December of that same year, the Yellow Vest movement, uh, movement reached its climax. In a particularly violent protest in Paris, demonstrators clashed with police, leading to widespread destruction. The Yellow Vests were demonstrating against growing economic inequalities, the high cost of living, and against perceived government indifference towards them. Looking at the current divide in the Western world, Nicolas Mathieu's novel looks very timely. 
The growth of our current divide was definitely fueled in that decade of the 1990s. It is a page turner, a very well told story. Since this book is also about awakening sexuality, you will find quite explicit descriptions of sexual organs and sexual action, a bit too much for me, a bit too much than needed, I thought, and that reminded me in some ways of my favorite book of 2023. The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. If you are sensitive to these kind of descriptions of sexuality, be mindful. But this is, after all, and everything, a great coming of age, but even a more political novel that explains a bit of what has become of our societies. So I highly recommend you to read And Their Children After Them by Nicola Mathieu. Thanks for watching this video. There might be more in the future. Stay tuned. I see you soon.